Uh, let's talk about the smaller subsequence of distinct character. So you're given a string S, return an graphically smaller subsequence of S that contains all the distinct characters of S exactly once. So let me just draw a diagram and this is going to be easy. So, uh, so you are going to use stack, be honest. So I'm going to create stack. All right. So now, uh, let's do it again. Um, you also need a uh, visit array, which is Boolean, because you don't want to have a duplicate uh, value for the return value, right? So visit uh, Boolean array and also the counting array to actually um, know my frequency, right? So um, I will explain this later, but let me do one more. I need also need a string builder for my return value, right? And probably this will be it, right? So stack, boolean, array, in the array, and sb, string builder. So let me talk about what I should do for this one. This is going to be visit. This is going to be count the frequency for the entire string s. And this is going to be return value, right? Return value. And the stack is going to be pushed into the unique distinct character. So, uh, just, I mean, just say character. Okay. Doesn't matter. And the, the logic behind is like, if you, if you have an empty stack, empty stack, right? You push into the stack right away. So, uh, for this character B, right? So B is, uh, B, B is the first character. Let me change another color. B is the first character I push into the stack. So I have to uh, set a visit for the character B to, to be true, right? So visit B equal to true. And also my frequency for the character B has to be decremented by one, right? So I will traverse the entire frequency first for my string S, right? So I will know how many characters for B uh, occur in the string S, right? So I will know like, can I actually uh, generate a lexicographically smaller subsequence. So this will be the really helpful array for the following on. And I will add another one, which is C. So if I add C, right? So this is a little bit too big. So if I add another character, which is C. So I have to, I have to pick my stack. So, uh, stack that P if my is this character is actually less than the, uh, the current character C. If this is true, I'm going to push into it. So uh, this is pretty easy. And then I also have to what, decrement my visit for the frequency, so C, and then set my visit for C equal to true. And I will do it again for the A, character A. So this will be the problem. So I have to push, push my A into it, right? Because um, for my current uh, character A uh, peak is actually less than C, right? And the problem is this: I will have to check my frequency frequency array. Is my frequency array for the stacked up peak, which is C? It's not. It's not equal to zero, which means there's, uh, which which means greater than zero, right? Which means there's a characters. Uh, character C inside my uh, counting array, so I can actually push my C later after the A, right? For sure, at some point, but I don't know. Uh, I have no idea when should I push my C into it, but there's at least one character C I will push after A, right? So I know I have to pop. So let me delete this character. So I know I have to pop. So I pop the C, and I also have to check again. Is my current uh, character A and the stack up peak, which is B. Is my uh, this is this is uh, this is a little bit weird. I mean, so I'll have to check again for my character peak, which is B. Is this B is less than current character A? All right, no, right? This is going to be checked. Is my frequency greater than one? I mean, greater than zero, to be honest. So if this is true, I'm going to pop again. 
So I will pop B. So I will push my B into it, right? So I'm going to change another color. So, okay, so I will pop B, sorry. I pop B and I will push into my A because there's no character left in the stack, right? So when I, when I pop my stack, right? So I send a visit to you true in this, uh, when I push into it, right? So when I pop, right? I also have to say visit at pop. Visit at pops the character. I need to say equal to false because uh, when I iterate a character, right, if there's a character push into a stack, I don't want to traverse again, right? So I need to know, I need to uh, say equal to false when I pop, right? And this is a solution. So later on, I will, later on, you will have ABC, right? Uh, ABC in the stack. So when you want to push into the, uh, return to the screen, so this is pretty simple. So when you pop, the pop order is what? C, B, A, right? So basically it's this, when you push into the stream builder, this is how you do it in stream builder. You basically use the stream builder dot insert at the first index, and then you pop the stack. So the answer is going to be what? So let me do this again. And this is going to be SB, all right? So the first index is going to be C. And then you pop, right? And then you are going to push B, I mean pop B from the stack, and then it's going to be inserted into the first index. This is going to be B, right? And then you pop. And then you pop A, and then this first index is going to be A. So the answer is A, B, C. All right. Uh, this is a little bit compl complicated, uh, which is the median solution. So let me just start porting. So you have a character stack equal to new stack, and also the stream builder. I'm going to put SP, new stream builder. And I also have a boolean array, right? Boolean uh, visit equal to new boolean. It's going to be 26. And uh, in the array for frequency, right? Frequency equal to new int 26, right? So I need to traverse the entire character for the string, right? Uh, it's got two char array. And frequency uh, C minus A increment, right? You, you, you increment the character A, right? Carry it from A to Z, right? So you need to, you need to subtract the uh, character A, be honest, because the S, uh, ASCII table. And let me do this again. So I have to traverse again. C, S dot to chart, right? So the first, the first follow is going to just add in the frequency count in the frequency array, right? And then the second follow is going to be, um, it's going to traverse uh, every single character for the stack. So this is the difference. So uh, if I traverse the character row, I need to decrement the character, right? Decrement the character, and I said I have to say equal to say equal to uh, say equal to true, right? So I'm going to say visit at c minus a. It's going to be true, right? All right, so uh, if a character is if, if a character is already inside the stack, right? If a character is already inside the stack, I don't want to traverse again, so I will continue. And if a character is not, I mean, if there is no character inside the stack, I need to push into the stack, right? Uh, I will just push push into the stack. Okay, so here's the problem. So uh, how how do we know that we want to pop the stack? A uh, pop the stack, right? So while well, the stack is not empty, be honest. So while well, the stack is not empty, and also the first uh character inside stack, which is stack up p. Stack up p is actually greater than the current character. So in this example, c and a, c is actually greater than character a, right? I mean. Uh, stack of P is C, current, current character is A, and this is valid. And also, uh, the frequency array for stack of P minus A, which is greater than zero, you can use uh, not equal to zero, doesn't matter. So, which means there's at least one character in the frequency array. So, I can still append the current, uh, I will append the character C later so uh, i will just have to pop right so i'm gonna say char equal to stack the pop and 
I need to set equal to false, right? So visit SC, I mean A out, sorry, out minus A equal to false, right? So this is the uh, entire version for the second second for loop. So while everything's in the stack, I need to push into my string builder. So while stack is not empty, I will have to I will have to pop, right? So how do I pop? So I will have to pop into my string builder at the first index. And this is pretty much the solution. So let me uh, run the code. All right, I have a typo. Yes, typo. Uh, hopefully I don't need another typo. Oh, I do. Try again. All right, here's it. So uh, this is not going to be hard. Just maybe you have to draw on the paper. So let's talk about time and space. This is going to be space, right? Uh, this is this entire thing is going to be space. All of n, n represent the length of the string s, and this is going to be all of n for time that like you traverse every single character in the string s, and you traverse again. So which is all of n. So so time and space is going to be all of n, right? And this is the solution, and I will see you next time. Bye.